Hi, today is September 16th and we're walking through the Bible answering those questions. Who am I? Who is God? And what the heck are we doing together? I would recommend going through the Bible the way I have in this past year. I have been transformed by the truth of God's word. I'm actually believing what I have said that I believe my whole life and I am changed. God has filled me with his Holy Spirit. I am meditating on his love. I'm getting to really know who I am and really know who he is. And not only that, I'm getting to understand. I'm understanding. I am understanding. I'm really understanding that God longs for me. He pursues me. He loves me enough to send his son. He died for me. I can't even wrap my mind around that. He is happy with me. He is pleased. I believe in him. And that's how I please God. I obey him. He likes that because it's good for me. And I, he's, he's given me a stamp of his identity. I am an image bearer of God and he delights in me. He's no fit. He's no a respect to her persons. He doesn't play favorites. And so all that I have said about me, you too can understand about God and you, the relationship that you have with a mighty, mighty God, creator of the universe, big enough to destroy the world, yet gentle enough to, to touch us and not, and just be gentle. And uh, I don't know. It's hard to explain. And I just really encourage you to speak out truth. And eventually you will believe it. We're reading Isaiah chapter 22 verses 1 through chapter 24 verse 23. Galatians chapter 2 verse 17 through chapter uh, 3 verse 9. Psalms chapter 60 verses 1 through 12. Proverbs chapter 23, 15 and 16. Isaiah in the Old Testament is continuing to speak the word of the Lord. Chapter 22, verse 1 through 24, 23. This message came to me, and he's speaking for himself, Isaiah, concerning Jerusalem, the valley of vision. And I'm going to skip a lot of the details and just pull out a few of the highlights Verse 5, what a day of crushing defeat. What a day of confusion and terror brought by the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies upon the valley of vision. The walls of Jerusalem have been broken. It's a different picture that we like, you know, we like to make God in our own image, in our own, not even our own likeness, but what we would like to have as a God. We'd love to have a Santa Claus God a God who never challenges, never never disciplines, never um, gets angry, never never uh, has the you know lays down the judgment, and one who just lets us get away with literally murder. But that's not who God is, and we really wouldn't like him. Like we might like it if he get if he lets us get away. But what if he lets the murderer? that took your mom or your dad or your child away, would you call him just then? Would you be okay with that kind of a God? He has to be just. He has to be a God who supports the rule of law. He set law in order to keep this world in order and to keep us protected. Verse 8, Judah's defenses have been stripped away. And then verse 11, all these bad things are happening, but you never ask for help from the one who did all this. You never considered the one who planned this a long time ago, and the one is capitalized. In other words, you never came to me. You never considered me. I think everything that God does, everything that he created in us is to propel us toward him and to to help us to turn to him because he wants to be with us and he wants us to be with him. And then verse 2, I'm sorry, verse 12, 
at that time, there's that phrase again, at that time, the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies called you to weep and mourn. He told you to shave your heads in sorrow for your sins and to wear clothes of burlap to show your remorse. But there's that three letter word that turns everything around. Instead, you dance and play, you feast, and you say, let's feast and drink for tomorrow we die. Okay, Sarah, Sarah, who cares? God cares, and he wants you to care, and he wants me to care. Uh, verse 14, the Lord of heaven's armies. Now listen to the greatness of that. The Lord of heaven's armies. The Lord of heaven's armies. Jesus said on the cross, I could have spoken to my father and ten Tens, like tens of thousands of angels would have come. And there are numbers that are even greater than that, that describe the heavens armies. He's, he's revealed this to me. Till the day you die, you will never be forgiven for this sin. That is the judgment of the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies. What sin? The sin of refusing correction. The sin of refusing judgment. The sin of using of refusing the discipline of God and still not turning toward him. It's, uh, it's foolish. And then in verse 15, he speaks to a particular person, the palace administrator. Who do you think you are? And what are you doing here? Building a beautiful tomb for yourself, a monument high up in the rock. And then God says, I will pull you down from your high position. And then I'll call my servant, Elohim, to replace you. And I'll dress him in royal robes and give him your title and your authority. I'll give him the key to the house of David, the highest position in the royal court. When he opens doors, no one will be able to close them. When he closes doors, no one will be able to open them. And then he'll bring honor to his family's name. And then there's a message concerning Tyre. And uh, who brought this time? Who brought this disaster on Tyre? The Lord of Heaven's armies has done it to destroy your pride and bring low all Earth's nobility. There's a scripture that says, "Pride goes before not a fall," which most of us quote, but pride goes before destruction. We want to get rid of pride. Revived yeah, Tyre will be revived. Verse seventeen. Isaiah just describes the awful looting of the earth and the com it being completely emptied and uh, suffering for the sins of its people because they violated God's laws. There is a price for sin. Its people must pay the price for sin, verse 6. And my brother Scott says sin destroys. He God hates sin. And if we're hanging on to sin like, no, no, you can't let go, Sin will be destroyed. If we're hanging on to sin, we also have chosen to be destroyed along with sin. And, you know, sin because sin destroys. It's wicked. And it doesn't just destroy the person who chooses to sin, but it also destroys the people around him, uh, around him or her, I should say. The city writhes in chaos. Mobs gather in the streets, crying out. This says for wine, but we have testimony in this nation. They're crying out for what? I'm not really sure. Justice, equality, um, you know, whatever they whatever they believe they're 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 entitled to. They're crying out for it. But there's that three letter word turns things around again. All who are left shout and sing for joy. There will be a remnant. Those in the West praise the Lord's majesty. In the Eastern lands, give glory to the Lord. In the lands beyond the sea, I pause, it might be, that might be America. And it wasn't even discovered when this book was written. Praise the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. We hear songs of praise from the ends of the earth, songs that give glory to the righteous one, capital letters. But my heart is heavy with grief. Destruction falls like rain from heaven in that day in that day the lord will punish the gods in the heavens and the proud rulers of the nations of the earth they will be rounded up and put in prison they will be shut up in prison and will finally be punished for the lord's the lord of heaven's armies will rule on mount zion he will rule in great glory in jerusalem 
in the sight of all the leaders of his people. Going to the New Testament, Galatians chapter 2, verse 17 through chapter 3, verse 9. He's talking about the law, circumcision, and keeping the law in order to be saved. He says, for when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. To the law, I stopped trying to meet all its requirements so that I might live for God. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's our relationship. I did not treat the grace of God as meaningless. For if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has cast an evil spell on you? Who has bewitched you, he says. Let me ask you one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. You received the Spirit because you believed the message you heard about Christ. How foolish can you be? After starting your Christian lives in the Spirit, why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? I ask you again, does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you because you obey the law? Of course not. It is because you believe the message you heard about Christ. In the same way, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. Then the real children of Abraham are those who put their faith in God. What's more, the scriptures look forward to this time when God would declare the Gentiles to be righteous because of their faith. God proclaimed this good news to Abraham long ago when he said, all nations will be blessed through you. So all who put their faith in Christ share the same blessing Abraham received by his faith. There's so much of our relationship is described in there. God is righteous and it's been, it's just amazing. So I, I um, recommend, I compel, I ask you to read it or listen to it for yourself. Psalm 16, 1 through 12, you've rejected us, O God, and broken our defenses. You have been angry with us. Now restore us to your favor. Rescue your beloved people. Answer and save us by your power. God has promised this by his holiness. With God's help, we will do mighty things, for he will trample down our foes. So even if we deserve judgment, God is still merciful, and he's open to us coming to him and saying, God, um, I repent and rescue me and deliver me from my enemies. I want you to consider sharing these videos so God's word may be heard and have an absolutely incredible blessing.